My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today I would like to discuss with you the changing face of war. More precisely, the democratization of war. Like all other forms of technology, war technology is being privatized and democratized. It's being put at the hands of individuals. Ever since the 1950s, Individuals have been challenging the state's monopoly on violence in an organized, structured way. Individuals have been forming militias, terrorist organizations, also known as freedom fighters. Mercenary PMCs, private military companies such as the Wagner Group, now augment or even substitute for standing armies. Weapons have been miniaturized and rendered more affordable. The latest example is the kamikaze drone, manufactured by nearly 30 countries around the globe, most notably in Iran. Of course, where else? <laughs> missiles of all varieties, even ballistic missiles, are in the hands of paramilitary formations, such as the Houthis. Warfare, especially of the urban kind, has been taken underground into indestructible, tangled networks of tunnels. Cyberspace affords another battlefield of distributed belligerence. Nation states now habitually team up with a new variant of proxy clients, non-state operators in theaters of asymmetrical warfare. These developments have radically transformed the very nature of war. Social media, Smartphone cameras, streaming services and television have brought the battlefield into our living rooms in live color. As usual, in the sated West, we keep getting warfare in the developing world all wrong. Similarly, other lessons about the North-South divide we overlook are the West has institutionalized corruption, also known as lobbying and now preaches to the developing world about nepotism, cronyism, and venality. Technology should never be the end, only the means to an end. The indigenous population knows the best solutions to its problems. We need to listen, rather than preach, hector, and dictate. And these are, this is a sample of, of things we get got wrong about the Third World War the developing world or, or the global south. But most importantly, education is only one path to social mobility. In other societies, reputation and social networking matter much more than education. In many territories in the third world, terrorism and war are the only viable vocations, the only ways to make a living. Terror organizations can be eradicated only when they do not enjoy popular support and when they engage mostly in self-enrichment via crime. Examples, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, narco-terrorists in South America and so on. In all other cases, when the so-called terrorist organization enjoys popular support, faced with resolute attrition by state actors, terror groups convert into political parties. For example, Hezbollah, IRA, ETA, Sandinistas in Nicaragua, and so on and so forth. More generally, war is, brings out the worst in us and the best in us. And there's a link in the description to this video uh, to a lecture where I analyze this phenomenon. War is a psychological, a mass psychogenic illness, a mass psychological phenomenon. These are, this is the changing face of war. And if we, if we go on pretending that regular conventional standing armies can defeat terrorist organizations on their own turf, supported by the population, we are going to suffer the way Israel has suffered and is suffering, the way the United States has suffered and is suffering. Like climate change, war is a human phenomenon, 
rather than confront it self-delusionally, we better accept it and adapt to it. It is not going away, no matter what we do. So why waste our scarce resources on its delusional elimination? Thank you for listening. And thank you, I wish to thank Scott Jacobson for his indispensable help in putting together this column.